One of the trickier serve illusions is the weight transfer. So when you're looking at the player, you can see the, the weight transfer it initially in front, and then we're swinging backwards. You might misinterpret and think that we transfer weight from back foot to front foot when we serve, but that's not actually the case. So it just looks like that, especially from the back angle. So it might look that the weight transfer goes to back foot and then we push to the front foot. But actually the weight transfer is from back foot to either both feet fairly equally distributed or actually even more to the front foot. So the weight goes front, back, front. So very important to see that little distinction that you're already stretching yourself here and that there's more weight on the front foot you can see I can lift the back foot so we're going like this and then we push into the surf rather than the illusion that you might see which is back forward so the surf is not back forward the surf is back forward and surf so the weight transfer again is from front foot to back foot and immediately stretching yourself going more on the front foot and then serving. The next illusion is that the follow through is not to the left. So let me hit one serve. So when you look at a normal serve and you see okay the, the follow through of the racket came of the left side, so my left side of the player you might interpret that as you're thinking okay as I'm hitting the ball I need to move my arm to the left of the body because that is what I saw now that is not really true because we don't bring the racket to the left side by swinging our arm this way we actually swing our arm more in this way and then what happens is we rotate the shoulders so that's how the racket comes to the left side we don't use our shoulder to swing this way we actually swing more to the right and we pronate on all serves and then what happens is that we allow the momentum that we've created with the serve rotate our body and that's how the racket comes to this side what you may see with some players that serve and volley and they don't want to follow through for too long because that makes it difficult for them to run towards the net they will actually just finish here. So a certain volley player might finish here and start running to the net and simply not really following completely to this side. And that might give you a clue that actually the arm movement, so the arm movement is much more this way, just to the right side. And the reason why the racket ends up on the left side is because we turn the shoulders, because we relax after the surf and we allow the momentum to turn our body. So again, it's basically our shoulders that move the racket to this side. It's our shoulders that move the racket to this side. And it's not our swing with the arm that brings the racket to this side. Another serve illusion happens because we tilt our body when we serve. So if I go in a trophy position, and you're observing my elbow position you can see that the elbow is fairly low in relation to my body and so what might happen when you're looking and analyzing the serve and you're looking at the player and you see the, their elbow position what might happen is that you're trying to put your elbow here without realizing that my elbow is here because my body is tilted so if my body is not tilted and it's like this you can see that my elbow is higher, it's actually almost at the same height as my shoulder. So I can put myself in this position and then just tilt myself and you can see that the elbow lowers itself. So I did not lower my elbow with my arm, but it's just an illusion that the elbow is going down because I'm tilting my body. So one of very common mistakes that we have to correct many times with tennis coaches is where the elbow is too low and then we have to lift them up and do all sorts of corrections with tennis players because they are positioning themselves like this. And I believe that the main reason
for that is because they misinterpret, you may misinterpret what you're seeing, because to your eyes you are certain that you see a low elbow, which is true, but the elbow did not get down there by using your arm, it got down there because we tilt our body when we prepare for the serve. So I recommend that you look at yourself in front of the mirror, so you position yourself like this, so look at yourself in the mirror where the arms are parallel to the ground and then just tilt your body so that you see that the elbow does go down without any need of lowering the elbow with your arm directly. There's a similar illusion that happens when we tilt our body and I call it the trophy position is not vertical. So when you're looking at players and you see the trophy position you can see that the racket is vertical but what you might fail to see again if you're just trying to put the racket vertical in trophy position is that their body is tilted so when the body is not tilted and I position back you can see now that the trophy position or the position of the racket is actually diagonal or closed so you can see I get in a vertical position of the racket when I tilt my body that's very important to see the reason why that is important is because if you're just trying to feel your hand and you're thinking I need to position my racket vertically and then you tilt your body it very often times happens that you end up in a waiter's position or a waiter's tray which is very difficult to correct on the serve so again if you're initially thinking I need to get vertical and then you tilt your body then your racket head opens too much so actually try and think that when you're preparing the serve before the tilt the trophy position is actually diagonal the racket is tilted and so when I get into this position you can see now that the racket is vertical the next illusion is called we don't face the court at contact so if I do one serve and I finish the serve you can see that when I finish the serve I am facing the court with my body and you might assume you might believe that as I'm making contact with the ball I'm already facing the court now that oftentimes happen not only because you might misinterpret technique but also because of our desire to control to have things under control so we want to see the target we want to see how our serve is going very quickly so as as we're about to make contact, we're immediately rotating and trying to orient ourselves towards the court. And that, of course, is not correct tennis technique. Actually, when we make contact with the ball, we are roughly at a 45 degree angle. Or in other words, we are facing the ball. So wherever the ball is, our body is basically facing the ball. So that's very important to see. It's not easy to see uh, when the service execute it at normal speed but when you're watching the serve at slow motion try and see that when the server is making contact with the ball they are not facing the court they are at the 45 degree angle and not only that they stay at the, this 45 degree angle for a split second when the racket is starting is accelerating after the contact and only later we let the arm turn the body towards the court The next illusion is called not arching your back. So what you may misinterpret and use your body incorrectly is when you're looking at the player in this position and you're trying to feel, you're trying to imagine how did the player do that. So how did I do this position? How did I get into this position? One very common mistake in this position is that you think that I'm arching my back. You think I'm pushing my hips forward and like arching my back and if you try to do that you will feel that you feel very weak in this position you might think that that is how the serve is because you're looking at this position you're thinking that's how the player has created this arc in their back but I have not created this arc by arching my back I've simply bent my knees and I'm looking up so my back is still straight that's very important to see so I'm exactly in the same position here with my back 
So I feel quite firm and strong in my lower back. And when I go in this position, I'm exactly the same in my back. So I've not created this position in any way by changing anything in my lower back. So if I would change anything in my lower back, I would do like this. And then I feel very weak. So it's very important that you feel very firm in your lower back and that you don't misinterpret this position as arching your back. But it's actually more just bending your knees and still staying firm in your lower back and you will realize that you will get in this position in the same way as you see it on camera or on TV.